Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning all about the player-based raid system. In the Hilder's Request update, they added a bunch of different world modifiers. One of them is called player-based progression. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how the player-based world modifier keeps track of each player's progress. There seem to be three main factors that are considered for each player. The world keeps track of if you've killed a troll, a surdling, a bat. But these settings are kind of special because they don't get changed straight away. They actually get changed after you log out and log back in, leading to a whole bunch of confusion. The other system player-based looks at is the item list saved to your character. So have you noticed how the first time you pick up something, you'll get that UI prompt that says new item? That is what player-based raids looks at. Your character has it saved, and you can actually reset the entire character thing. So now when I pick up this mushroom, then boom, my whole inventory and that mushroom will now show up as new materials and items. And this would all be potentially triggering to progression in a player-based world. And then we have the third system, which is all about your powers. It doesn't seem to matter whether you activate the power or not, it's all about if you have it in the first place. And now that you know these three factors, let's actually see this in action. I'll start by resetting this character. You can see that I have no trophy memory, no skills, nothing. It's all set back to zero including my item progression. And now if I go towards this base here so that I'm eligible to trigger raids, I can start to run some tests. All I have to do is do random event and then stop, random event, stop. And I can spam this to get enough events to trigger to know what's actually going on. And as we can see, I'm currently only eligible for the first event because I reset the item progression on the character. But now, I have the Ether power. So what happens if I start spamming that event? Now, simply by having the Eek power, even though I haven't looted any items, you can see that I get the Forest is Moving event every time. By having the Eek power, we have progressed enough, as far as the game is concerned, to be ready for the second raid tier. And this illustrates how the powers impact progression. But that's just one of the three components. Here we have two items that are both progression triggers. If you pick up the Swamp Crypt Key or the Elder Trophy, the game's going to notice this and throw you new raids. Let's go with the Crypt Key, and you can see that we start getting these Swamp events. But it's not just those. We can actually also get the Ground is Shaking events, and other things going on. And this is because my character already had the troll key set. So even though I unset it, I didn't log out and log back in. As you saw earlier, the other keys get updated immediately. I looted that item, and then I started getting the new raids. But the defeated enemy keys don't function that way. There's a delay before they get set. And this is probably why some people think that you have to kill two trolls to get the key. That's not true, but you could kill 10 or 20 trolls in one sitting and never get the event, because you haven't logged out yet. If you want to find a list of these items, then I send you to the Valheim Fandom Wiki, a fantastic place to learn about the mechanisms in Valheim. Here you can scroll down to this player-based table, and you can see a list of the items that cause triggers to happen. Usually it's the initial pickaxes, trophies, and also the key items that you get from each boss. The column that acts weird is this required defeat column here. You can see that it tracks the trolls, sirtling bats, and then also all three of the Hilder bosses. But this doesn't get saved, basically, until you log out and log back in, confusing us greatly. And that's the basics of the player-based raid system. However, it's not actually everything. Have you noticed how after you progress, you've killed your Gluth, goblins start showing up at night, spawning around you, even in the meadows? Well, this happens because of a world key that gets set when you kill your Gluth and when you kill the Queen. And I only know this because I use the player progression preset on my server, 
The nighttime spawning mechanism for seekers and goblins after you kill Yugluth and the Queen doesn't seem to be altered by this player-based world modifier. So keep that in mind, because this can be a very invasive world just because one of your players has killed Yugluth. Now, I'm not entirely positive on all of this, but I'm just telling you, on my server, I have to run this command periodically to make sure that Seekers don't show up in the meadows and Goblin don't start wrecking these pretty bases. And now you understand how the player-based world modifier works. It keeps track of these three things, your item progression, also the powers that you've had equipped, and then, after you kill certain enemies and log out and log back in, also, it keeps track of that. And if you want to support my work, then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. There's something about having a world that's more than just you playing in it that really makes it feel more alive and immersive. And I'm really loving the dedicated server experience. And if you want YouTube to show you more Valheim videos, then just like this video or any other video about Valheim, and then YouTube will start dishing out more Valheim-related content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!